Hello everybody, welcome to my first round World Cup predictions. I'll be making four of these, one for each quarter of the draw. And here's the second quarter. Um, again, I'll just I'll just get straight into it. Uh, remember, it's just for fun. I'm not judging anybody. Okay, so the first the first game is shot versus somebody whose name I can't pronounce because it's it's written in Cyrillic. But uh, Shod's team is a Wood Elf team. Uh, absolutely standard build, three catches. Um, he has stacked dodge onto the thrower as his fourth skill, and I quite like that. I mean, I think the three skills are pretty much set in stone for Woodies, which is tackle, strip, leader. And I quite like that he stacked the defensive skill on his leader. I think that's a fine decision. Uh, two rerolls, so yeah, a, a, a very solid Wood Elf build. And Shod is playing Sharktopuses. I, I, you know, forgive me for not knowing what the hell that coach name is, but um, it's a good name. But it's the problem with Necros here. So he hasn't got enough money for everything. He's got three rerolls. He's basically wasted thirty k, uh, which, to be fair, Undead do that as well. But he, he's got his two. He's got his two ghouls. He's stacked block show hands for against against woodies he's got a mobile guard he's got a reliable flesh golem he's got a werewolf with wrestle mighty blow because he's only got one wolf he's basically had to share the role of damage dealer and and like sacker slash safety so you know this is the problem with necro it's why i didn't like them that much even though it, it's good that they get the extra skills necro are a bit under par at a thousand tv and even at 1100 they can't get everything whereas a lot of other teams, like for example the best ones, Wood Elves and uh, ne uh, Undead and Lizard Men, get full builds and humans, they get full bu builds with everything they need and Necro always have to give something up. So for that reason, I'm going to back the Woodies. Now we have RTSD versus Thessa and similar similar to the previous team, he's got three rerolls. He hasn't wasted 30k because he's given up a white and I hate giving up a white. But you can argue, certainly argue it's better than giving up a wolf. Like, but it's just horrible that they've got to give up something. They can't have everything. Uh, Twelve players, double ghoul, sure hands, a bit of strip insurance, uh, block on his fleshies, which are probably going to be better against wood elves. Um, block tackle and uh, and a mighty blow. Yeah, okay. Maybe he's going to plan on going mighty blow piling on on this wolf. But uh, I would rather have you know start with. Either block on both or block on one and wrestle on the other. And he is facing the Flying Frenchman, coached by Thessa, a human team who hasn't used a double. Now, I don't really like that because I would have used my double on guard, on, on a different player. Um, I don't know if he knew the rules, misunderstood the rules or what. Um, I mean, he is French, presumably, with a team called the Flying Frenchman. Um, he hasn't even spent his fan factor. Like you'd, you'd have thought if it was a conscious decision, he would have had fan factor or a cheerleader or a coach. So it looks like he just didn't get the rules. It's the only explanation because to me, you know, there's so much value to be gained from starting with guard on the catcher and then after the first game getting an additional double or, you know, getting the guard later on the ogre or whatever. I, I just think... You know anybody would have used the double um, maybe he didn't maybe he just didn't want to because I mean it's still a great choice you know guard on the ogre maybe you know at the end of the day if you want to tackle mighty blown as much guard as possible that's what you take um, the only thing is you really should get the fan factor or the cheerleader or the uh, assistant coach but it, it's you know it's a fine team three rerolls apple that's what I like the most and it's a human team, so I've got I've, I've pretty much got to back the human teams in nearly every game. So I'll back Thessa to win this one. Okay, we've got one of the very few Orc teams. Orc team's a bit shafted in this tournament, I think, just because humans are so much better, um, <laughs> basically. He hasn't got a thrower, which, as much as I hate the Orc thrower, I think starting with sure hands against, uh, against Woody, you know, with Woody's being such a big, such a scary part of the field... I think I'd like to start with a thrower, even though I normally wouldn't. He's choosing one of his very valuable four skills to give sure hands to the blitzer. And uh, mighty blow tackle, but no guard whatsoever. Uh, I can't really get behind this this team selection. And uh, single 89 may be a very good coach, but he is up against it with one of the worst matchups for Orcs. 
which is lizard men. Honestly, I, every time I play as lizard men versus orcs, I just feel like it's impossible to lose. <laughs> and now, obviously, it's not impossible to lose. The, the orcs have got mighty blow tackle, and you know they could just get lucky with a mighty blow. But you know, I, lizard men are a monster team. It, this is uh, this is the only way I would build a team. Um, no, it's not actually. I'd tell a lie. He's gone twelve players. Yeah, you, you could choose to have three rerolls and only 11 players. I think you've got to have the apple. Uh, some people have built them slightly differently. Some have had some some have gone three rerolls and no apple, and some have gone 11 players. Uh, so there is a bit of wiggle room there. I, I don't hate 12, 12 players, but with only getting the four block guys, um, or some variation, only getting four skills, I think I would have probably gone with a third reroll. But maybe because he's gone all block, he's only gone two. Uh, plus, there's overtime to consider that that makes rerolls more valuable than they would normally be. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on the, the French lizard men here. Next up, we've got Eon versus Notorious Noob. Um, now, I, I, again, I don't know Eon. I don't know really any of the French coaches, but there, you know, the, there is a lot of big French leagues, so they're, they're an, an unknown qual quantity to me, and uh, they're not really you know champs ladder regulars. Um, Again, that his team build exemplifies the problems with with Necromantic here. He's gone thirteen players, only two rerolls though, and um, so he does get all. He, and he doesn't even get all the positionals. He's still got to give up a ghoul. Um, I like the two guard whites, block ghoul, block fleshy. But he's got a skillless werewolf, which I really don't like, and block mighty blow, pretty standard on those. Now he's up against notorious noob. And I know Notorious Noob's a great player, so this isn't uh, this isn't anything against Elm at all. Um, he's gone for probably the best Wood Elf build. I think I think this is the I think this is better than mine. I think I took the risk of block on the catcher. He's just gone wrestle on alignment. I think this is probably the best starting Wood Elf build. Um, two rerolls. I prefer two rerolls to reroll Apothecary, and he's gone tackle strip as standard leader as standard tree. So he's gone. He's one of the best coaches in the tournament, in my opinion, and he's gone for, in my opinion, the best Wood Elf build. So I've got to back him to win this versus an unknown quantity, and I don't really like Necro as well. Now we have Nerd Frog versus the champ Guinness, the defending champion. Um, but let's start with Nerd Frog. He's, he's gone for lots of positionals here. Um, I'm not such a fan of taking the positionals on on Amazons because I feel you can squeeze more out with not having them. Um, squeeze more value elsewhere. He has gone with the positionals and he's gone block sure hands, obviously best against Wood Elves, and then just two more block guys. So he's got no guard at all, but lots of blodge. Um, four rerolls apple. I'm really not a fan of the build, to tell you the truth. I don't think Amazons are that strong in this format, seeing as everybody you would play will have a tackler. And after the first round, a lot will have double tackle or tackle mighty blow or tackle mighty blow and tackle or double tackle mighty blow. You know, normally um, in NAF tournaments, Amazons prey on people who don't have tackle at all or, or maybe it's only one tackle. And in this, the fact that you've got this giving a skill after each round, it means that Amazons aren't going to get as easy auto wins as they normally do. So not really a fan of Amazons in general or this build in particular and he's up against the 2016 Blood Bowl 2 World Cup champion Guinness um, he has qualified again he had to qualify again even just despite the fact he was the defending champion uh, I think maybe I would have let him in for free but there you go he, he, he did qualify so hats off to him for that um, he's gone with a build that I would go in terms of team of 11 players 3 rerolls Apo um, but and what he's done, I, I actually like what he's done here. He's he's used the format stacking to start stacking with block tackle, and that's that's one of the big weaknesses of lizard men in normal NAF style. Is only one skill per player. They they have to take either guard on the crocs and five block, or they take six block. Pretty much, that's all they ever take. Now he's he's being able to shore up his worst matchups, being wood elves and amazons, with starting with a block tackle. I like that option. And it's immediately played off with him, paid off with him facing Amazons in the first round. So you know it's a horrible matchup, actually, Amazons for Lizard Men. But the fact he's got this block tackle, and the fact that he's the champ, and the fact that the Amazon team I don't like so much, I'm going to back Guinness in this one. Okay, so now we have 
Junior 84 versus Ariokin, I believe. Um, he's gone Lizardmen, his Junior 84. He has gone for the 12th skink, uh, the 12th player. The, uh, how many is that? Fifth skink rather than the Apo. I prefer the Apo just so you can, you know, Apo a KO'd Saurus or a Kaz Saurus. I think they're far more important. Um, I would just use it as soon as possible on a Saurus. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I think I think it's a bigger decision between the third reroll and the, and the twelfth skink. But I think I would always have a, an apothecary, so I'm not such a fan of that. But maybe he wants to foul the ward answer if he gets the chance. So there is that, and four block, pretty standard. Well, it is Ariokan, and he's gone for pro elves. A very strange choice, pro elves. They're not a left field. I mean, they do get the extra skills. They do start with a double. However, what I would have done with a double is I'd have I would have stacked dodge and guard on one of the blitzers, and after the first game, gone guard on the other blitzer. So you'd have two blood step guarders after the game one, which would be very exciting, wouldn't it? And um, the problem is going pro elves is that obviously you've got a team full of armor seven, and your catchers don't start with skills. He's given one guard, but he hasn't got dodge or block in the first game, and he won't get both. Um, He's got the leader for the third reroll in the Apo. So it's interesting and it's a brave choice. But um and even though elves have got quite good tools against Lizard Men, I think I'm still gonna back the Lizard Men here, just just because they're just a strong team, you know. They there's not too much dodge on this team, only three dodge players. Um so he's gonna have to he's gonna have to dodge away from the from the strength four markers quite a bit. He's only got armor seven, so it's quite easy for him to take a lot of cars as well. So, uh, Junior 84 is my pick there. Now we have Nacho Bill versus Falladius. Nacho Bill's gone for the Rat Ogre, which I actually quite like a Rat Ogre. I think it's it's risky, of course, but, um, you know, it can pay off. He's given it Juggernaut to make it very reliable, so that's okay. And then um, he's got the throw for the sure hands, 13 players. Now, 13 players is, you know, he's, he's, you've got to choose. 12 players is a bit light. But two rerolls is a bit light, and you've got to choose to be light on one of them. And he doesn't have an apo either, so you know it's it's tough to fit in everything you want if you want the rat ogre. He's gone max gutters, um, block and wrestle, tackle, storm vermin. Mean, it's actually quite a nice little scaven team, this. Uh, and you know, it, I don't mind going high risk because at the end of the day, there's so much luck involved to try to win six games in a row against top quality opposition. Why not take something high risk, high reward like a strength five guy with mighty blow? You know, uh, I, I, I like the rat ogre. Now, Falladius, I've I've never heard of Falladius before the World Cup. He's only a level fifteen coach, so he must play mostly in private leagues. He entered three private leagues and won all of them. <laughs> so I won a ticket from all of them. I don't know if he actually won every league, but um, you know he could have done. He certainly qualified from three different leagues. So he, he beat my record of qualifying to order three. And uh, he's gone Lizard Men. And again, he's given up the Apothecary for the 12th player, uh, which I'm, I'm not sure about. And he's gone three block and a guard. I think that's a fine decision. Especially he's got the third reroll to make up for the lack of block. I do like, I do like guard. And uh, yeah, look, I mean, he's a bit of an unknown quantity, but Skaven, I don't really like it, this TV. They've got a bit of a wild card chance with a roger, but you know, with that record, he's he's got to be he's got to be good, hasn't he, to qualify three out of three? So I'll back for Ladius there. And last up on this on this show, but definitely not least, probably the tie of the round. Uh, this is an unbelievable first round matchup. We've got Ducky, three time winner of Champs Ladder, I believe. He may take offence. I don't know. He might have won four. I know he's won at least three. Um, over 76% win percentage in Champs Ladder. He's absolutely amazing. He's a machine. Won it with all different kinds of races as well. He's gone exactly the same build as me in players um, and skills. He's gone the block. Bit of a risk. Block catcher first game, but obviously pay off after it with when you get guard on him. Um, he's He's gone for the Apo though, rather than the second re-roll. You know, a bit, bit more reliability. It, it, it's a tough choice to make because... You know, if you end up rolling a one, and you you would have you would have scored if you had a reroll, the reroll not having the second reroll could cost you the game. On the other hand, if you get a ward answer knocked out or cast, 
having the apple, you know, would, would stop you losing the game there. So it's a really tough choice between the uh, reroll and the apple. Uh, but yeah, Ducky's amazing and he's playing knee proxy. And knee proxy is also amazing. Knee proxy has a win rate of 73% on Champs Ladder. So, you know, they're two of the highest win percentages on Champ Ladder. And it's a classic matchup, actually, tabletop, you know, NAF style. Wood Elves versus Undead. The, you know, absolutely standard build for Ghouls. He, again, he's nearly taken it as good as he could get against Wood Elves. I do think it would be better if he had sure hands on the Ghoul than Guard on the Mummy. Would definitely be better against Wood Elves. You can certainly argue that Guard on the Mummy makes him better against humans, etc. But I think it only makes you marginally better against those. And I think sure hands on the Ghoul would have made him a lot safer, you know, to... But I think already, you know, look, Knee Proxy's a great coach, Ducky's a great coach. This is really tied around totally 50 50. Um, you know, anything could happen. So this is really going to be, really going to be a peach. But I've got to, I've got to back my boy, but my boy, uh, Ducky having a, you know, a Champs Ladder legend. So, um, and just Wood Elves. Wood Elves are the best, the best team at winning games, ultimately. So there's my predictions for the second uh, quarter of the bracket. Now um, I will say that it's funny enough. Uh, if Ducky win, whoever the win, whoever wins out of Ducky and Knee Proxy, if Knee Proxy wins, he's got a rough road of playing two lizard men. But if Ducky wins, he's got the easy road of playing two lizard men because you know it's a great matchup for Wood Elves playing against lizards. So that's a bit interesting there, isn't it? But uh, again, this is not serious. You know, I'm not trying to diss anyone. Just a bit of fun. And um, thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.